Hi, everyone. This is Walter Kim from the National Association of Evangelicals. I hope you've been enjoying the Difficult Conversations podcast so far. It's no accident that this series has come during an election season. And I want to pause our normal flow and speak to this moment following the election. This season of our nation's life has provoked deep feelings. Some are some are elated by the election results. Others are devastated. Many are dismayed and are still sorting through their emotions. And even those among us who feel disengaged are often disengaged, well, because we are just exhausted by it all. However you may be feeling, God remains our refuge. He is the one whom we can trust. Our hope is anchored in a God who is aware of the upheavals of our time, but is not unnerved by it, whose mission for the church is still to participate in the renewal of all things in Christ. In his final instructions before his death, Jesus promised that we would have problems, and in this world, you will have trouble. But he also promised the gift of his peace. He said, peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give. Let your heart not be troubled and do not be afraid. We can pursue the hard work of peacemaking because Jesus simultaneously was humanly honest about having challenges, but divinely commissioned to give us the resources of his reconciling peace. In past episodes, we've talked about how God's kingdom is greater and higher than any earthly kingdom. Politics is an essential part of life. It's God's gift to help humans order our communities, promote and pursue justice, seek the flourishing of others. But politics is not God's greatest gift. And we should not idolize our politicians, nor expect ultimate solutions to come from our government. So, whether in this election, if you find yourself on the winning side or not, we keep his kingdom in view above all things, and loyalty to Jesus over any party or politician. This fundamental conviction can continue to guide us from here. Those who have been elected— and those who support them have an opportunity to bring others along with them and to work together across divides. Instead of succumbing to the temptation to gloat, we will need to empathize with the disappointments and fears of fellow citizens and fellow congregants and to make space for their contributions. And those of us who have lost their race and those who supported them have an opportunity to creatively and faithfully engage in the process Of collaborating. Instead of succumbing to the temptation to gripe, we will need to discover productive ways of communicating our deep concerns while still working for the common good. How we handle this moment will shape the possibilities that can be pursued for the church and for the country. Having concluded one set of difficult conversations leading up to the election, we will soon embark upon the challenge of actually trying to forge a common life together. Many complicated, contentious issues are before us, and real differences exist on a whole host of matters, like abortion, immigration, race, our justice system, sexuality, the economy, the climate, and a lot more. How are we going to handle these difficult conversations in ways that honor God, advance the gospel, and lead to flourishing. We will need to answer the questions that were asked of Jesus. Who is my neighbor? And what does it mean to love my neighbor? We'll be back next week with a conversation I had with Dr. Daryl Bach. In it, we really dig into how, in this moment, Christians can become the peacemakers that Jesus called blessed.